fixtures are out for the new football season. Uh, Sky Blues are going to start the uh, the 2013-14 season with an away match at uh, Crawley Town on uh, Saturday, August the 3rd. Just as well, really, I guess. Uh, the City's first home match will be against Bristol City on the following Saturday, but of course we still don't know at uh, where that's uh, definitely going to be played. Uh, I'm delighted to say, though, the Sky Blues boss, Stephen Presley, joins us on the show. Morning, Stephen. Morning. Thanks for being with us this morning. What, what do you make, first of all, of the fixture list? What are, you, uh, what are your thoughts so far? My thoughts are that uh, I'm not a manager that reads too much into the schedule because I think that uh, games uh, are only good games if you, if you actually win. <laughs> so you know, in, in terms of you know, I hear a lot of people saying it's a good run of games that you have, but yeah. that's only the case if you win those games. So I, I never read too much into the schedule. But the exciting thing is when the fixtures come out, you know, that the season is uh, you know nearly upon us, and hopefully, as a football club, we can start talking about footballing issues rather than off the field issues again. What, what's the close season been like for you with all with all of the uh, uh, the talk off the pitch that's been going on? And, um, you know, you, as you say, your focus is, uh, is is playing games. I mean, what, what, what kind of uh, few months have you had? A very good few months. You know, it's not an ideal situation with the, the other aspects of the football club, but in terms of the football department, it's been a good two months. You know, we've worked very hard in the background in terms of trying to introduce a new culture to the club in terms of the way we're going to go about things the forthcoming season. There's been a lot of planning, a lot of strategy put in place. Mm. And there's also been a lot of work with regards to the recruitment of players. I I understand that we are under transfer embargo at this moment in time, but it hasn't stopped us putting the groundwork in and it hasn't stopped us meeting representatives of certain players and discussing possible uh, possible uh, signings. So we're going about things very much in a normal manner and uh, and hopefully come time of, uh, you know, X and the transfer embargo, we'll be in a position where we can actually recruit players. Can you give us an, any idea of uh, of numbers? Any any idea of how many? I mean, I know it's all it's all up in the wet your finger and stick it in the air, and it's Stephen really. But I just you know roughly how many are you looking at signing? Oh, probably in the region of about seven players. Right. Okay. You know, we're we're going to work this year with a with a, a far tighter squad, a smaller squad, a more manageable squad, um, and uh, it's something that I'm very much looking forward to. But we're certainly looking to recruit in the region of around seven players. You see, you're right. You're right. I mean, you're absolutely. You know, back, I mean, you you know more about this business than I do. But I mean, you 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 know what you're saying makes sense to a lot of people. It's about you're you're still doing the planning. You're still looking ahead. You're still just acting as if the club isn't in administration because you know you're going to be coming out the other side of that. But the elephant in the room, Stephen, is that you still don't know as a manager where you're going to be playing your home games. That has got to have an impact on on just how settled you feel for a start, hasn't it? There was a situation that I was very much aware of at the end of the season. So, you know, as a manager, I'm not a manager who looks at problems. I'm a manager who looks at solutions. So we had to plan our entire pre-season you know, without home fixtures. So we, we had to go about that, and we did go about that. We obviously have a trip away to Holland, which is a very exciting one, and we've managed to secure all away fixtures during the, 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 the pre-season. Again, it's not ideal. Again, I understand completely the frustration of our supporters, and uh, it's far from an ideal situation, but it's a situation that uh, hopefully in the coming find the right solution to you must worry though that that at some stages that you know what's happening off the pitch overshadows the important thing for fans which is winning games and what's happening on the pitch yeah, and, and there's a lot of change within the football department and there's going to be a lot of change over the, the coming months and hopefully years ahead because I think that the, this moment in time the club definitely needs the foundations put in place. You know, I went on record, you know, several weeks ago and stated, you know, for many years people have talked about Coventry being a massive club. But the actual... Um, rally of the situation is over the last 15 years the club has only finished in the top half of the table three on three occasions which is 8th, 11th and 12th mm. 
and for a club of our standing, of our size, with our fan base, that for me isn't good enough. And we need to start putting the foundations in place, the standards in place, the culture in place, to really start driving this football club on and getting results that I think our, our fans definitely deserve. But isn't, isn't the basis of that foundation having a home ground, you know, a fortress, a place where you you pack it out and people are afraid to come and play there because they know that that home support is going to be vocal and passionate. And if you haven't got that, then, you know, you're almost like a, 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 a twisted in the breeze, aren't you, to a degree? Listen, we all want that. There is no doubt about it. We all want that. We all want a Coventry City football club playing in Coventry City. The owners want that. I want that. Our supporters want that. Everybody wants that. We want that. It's about finding the solution. And I just hope that we can find the solution. When, when you're trying to... I don't know if you can just move or... I don't know whether it's asking you to move or stand still because the line's breaking up a little bit. If you could move, move and stand still, Stephen, at the same time. Yes. <laughs> okay. Come on, you're a football manager. You can do these things. I know you can. <laughs> when, when you're trying to sign players... Uh, yes. Uh, uh, does, does the fact that you have... You know, that all this is going on, that the club's in administration, that seems to be coming out, and you're talking to them tentatively about signing, does, yes. does that... Can you see that behind the eyes when you're talking to their representatives and they're thinking, Coventry City, I'm reading about this, I'm hearing about this. I don't know whether I want to get my player involved in that. Is that going to be a problem, do you think, for signing players? Well, I, I think when speaking to players, they want assurances. Um, so, you know, we have to give them assurances on certain aspects and, and, and one of them would be, you know, obviously honouring the contract that they sign and we're very comfortable that we can do that once as a, once we, we exit transfer embargo and administration. But the other big thing for football players is the environment and the philosophy of the football department and mm. club that it very much is in line with, with how they are as a football player. So, you know, I think that we identify the players that very much suit our style, and I think that that's vitally important. And also, one of the key ingredients for me in recruiting the players is the character of the players, because we must feel, fill our club now mm. with players with real hunger and desire to move our club in the right direction. So, you know, all of these things are vitally important, but there's no doubt they want assurances, and I hope in the meetings that I've had with players, I have given them the assurances that they desperately want. Listen, we know the kind of manager we are, that you are, we know the kind of manager that, that, you know, your style is getting on with it, playing the football, no nonsense, not worrying about the things that are going on around you, but but how do you feel about the prospect of ground sharing? How do you feel about the prospect of, I mean, some people have mentioned, you know, he heading to uh, to Warsaw uh, for an away game? As a manager, have you ever done that, and what do you think of that as a concept? Again, you know, I'll be honest, and, 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 and everybody will be in agreement with me, it's far from an ideal situation. It's far from what we all want. We all want a Coventry City playing in Coventry. No doubt about it. That is what we all want, but it's about finding the correct solution. And that's the important thing. The important thing is that we find the correct solution. And, uh, and hopefully in the weeks and uh, days ahead we can certainly do that. Um, the fixture list, as I say, out, and we'll, we'll, I'll give you the link so that people can follow it and go and have a look on the, uh, the BBC website where it'll uh, it'll be up if they haven't already. But as you've, you've already said, you know, some of those games, uh, it's about who you play rather than when you play them. And um, yeah. I'm just looking at some of them. I mean, Peterborough at home on Boxing Day, which which would be a nice little Midlands derby for uh, for Boxing Day, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And there's obviously a, a really good fixture on October the 19th. We play Wolverhampton away, you know, a Midlands derby. Yeah. That'll be a terrific game for our supporters, a really exciting game. You know, I think that the league this season is stronger than the league last season. I think that uh, the teams that have come down are of a very good standard, big clubs. And it's interesting, the teams that have come up are also big clubs. You have Bradford City, a huge club potentially a huge club. You have Rotherham, who are very much a club uh, moving forward with a new stadium, new ownership, and, uh, you know, and a club that are making heavy investments. So I think it's going to be a hugely competitive league and a really, really exciting league with some terrific games, as you've said, Peterborough, Wolverhampton, Sheffield United, Preston, you know, some big, big clubs in there. So I 
think it's a wonderful league this year, a really, really exciting league. Yeah, hopefully, as I say, we can talk about the excitement on the pitch and not so much of the uh, the drama uh, off it. I've I got to ask you: do, do you do you get asked your opinion by uh, by the board, by the football club? Do they say to you, Stephen, where would you uh, like to ground share if we had a choice? Are you are you being asked about? Because we've asked the fans, or the fans have been asked, haven't they? Yeah, n- no, but you know, it's something that I've not been involved in. You know, that's something that. Uh, you know, the, the owners of the football club have to decide upon. You know, my job has been to uh, work towards the football department. Very much that is my remit. You know, restructuring that. You, you, you maybe haven't heard that we we, we are uh, currently advertising for a, a position as head of recruitment within the club because that's a department we're completely going to overhaul. We're going to have a head of recruitment and a real recruitment structure with scouts throughout the country identifying the best young talent and the best players for us so in the football department we're working very very hard on reshaping it remodeling it and putting as i've said the foundations in place and that has been my remit you know the other things as i've said are far from ideal Mm. but I'm a manager to find solutions to the football department, and that's what I certainly intend to do. And as we stand today, all of the things that have gone on over the last few months and the uh, the tit-for-tat conversations that the club have had with the people outside of the club and all of that stuff has, has not diminished your appetite to, to continue to do what you, what you started to do when you took the job. Absolutely. If I was a country manager now and I was offered the job today, I would take it because it is a terrific football club with hugely passionate supporters with the potential to be again a great, great club. But there is a lot of hard work. That's one thing I must stress to our supporters. There is a lot, a lot of hard work ahead. And I said in a recent interview, we have to create a cause because the way the football club is at this moment in time where a club with an outstanding budget, a, a competitive budget but not an outstanding budget there are a number of issues surrounding the football club but the one common goal must be to get a winning team on the park and uh, you know I need their help in order to do that so you know it's a, a brilliant club and I, I, I'm really really excited about the, the season ahead